quality title race of all time. But coming out on top again in the Premier League, Manchester City. Hello guys, how are we getting on? My name is Aaron Kelly. You're very welcome back to another episode of the Premier League verdict and... Pff, wow, that game was not good for my blood pressure. Crystal Palace 2, Chelsea 3. Chelsea moving up to third after Leicester failed to beat Arsenal in the later game yesterday. And this game was incredibly topsy-turvy, ladies and gentlemen. It was... Wow, uh, where do we begin? I suppose we'll start off with uh, the starting 11 then, the Frank Lampard chose. The exact same side that beat Watford, except for one change being that N'Golo Kante was out with an injury. We did see that uh, he struggled, and I think that he might he might come off at the end of the Watford game with a, uh, a problem, but... Either way, he was out, and Billy Gilmore was in in the six. And uh, to be honest, I really did question this when the starting eleven came out because I was a little bit like, "Oh, what's what's Jorginho done wrong? Now, what what's he done to not warrant a place in the starting eleven? But whatever. Frank's obviously Frank definitely has an opinion of Billy Gilmore, and obviously wants to give him the experience in these tough games. Because let's be honest, Crystal Palace away is always a tough game, no matter what kind of form they're in. They always seem to raise their game when uh, the top six and the you know the big, big teams come to visit Selhurst Park. But yeah, apart from that Chelsea run change, there was Kepa, James uh, and Aspilicueta as the wing-backs. Uh, Zuma and Christensen, again, no Rudiger or Alonso, uh, still suffering as a result of their poor performances against West Ham. And uh, obviously then Gilmore, Barkley, Mount, Pulisic, Willian, and Olivier Giroud. And it was Olivier Giroud who gave Chelsea the lead after, I think it was about six minutes. Uh, a Gary Cahill injury was capitalised upon by Willian, who ran to the byline, pulled it back for Olivier Giroud, who taps it in for 1-0. And I heard a lot of people saying, oh, well, Gary Cahill, he's a Chelsea legend. Chelsea should have put the ball out of play. Let's be honest. I mean, if you do that, what is wrong with you? I think Jamie Redknapp said it on Sky Sports a couple of years ago. Paolo De Canio did a thing where he caught the ball. Uh, when someone was injured. He won some sort of like sportsmanship award for it, but Harry Redknapp was the manager of whoever he was at, at the time, West Ham, I presume it was, and he, he said he was fucking fuming with him, and he said, even said it at the time. You know, when if it's not a head injury, there's no need to really stop the game, I think, and William was right to play on, and he pulled it back, Giroud finished it to give Chelsea an early lead. Chelsea then took a two-goal lead just after the drinks break through Christian Pulisic. And this was a lovely goal. Shifts it onto his left foot and powerful shot past Vicente Guaita. And I thought at first maybe Guaita should have saved it. But this shot is hit with such power. And he probably wasn't expecting Pulisic to hit it on his left foot that quickly. The way he just shifts it onto his left past Joe Ward. Really good strike. And, uh, yeah, Guaita had no answer to it. And to be honest, at this point, at 2-0 up, I thought, with a Palace side who failed to score goals on a regular basis with the kind of forwards like Jordan Ayew and Christian Menteke. Obviously, Ayew has pitched him with a few goals here and there, but Christian Menteke hadn't scored until, since, I think it was April 2018 or something like that. Um, I said, with a two-goal lead, we should be safe for the three points here. But uh, that beacon of hope that seems to always be for Crystal Palace, he's had a poor season, Wilfred Zaha, but uh, he was the man, once again, who provided Crystal Palace with the hope. Really good strike from about 30, 35 yards out, to be fair. Uh, down the middle of the goal, it kind of swerves a little bit away from Kepa at the end. There is definitely a lot of movement on that ball. But, for sure, I think I think if the I think the best keepers in the league save that. And uh, I think if you put Ad uh, Adderson, wow, good man Aaron, Adderson. If you put Ederson or Allison uh, behind that shot, I feel like they do save it 9 times out of 10. And I just don't think Kepa is in that bracket. I don't think when we're talking about the best keepers in the league, Kepa certainly isn't there. And um, I don't know if he's going to be the main man for Chelsea going forward or are we going to try and sign someone in the summer. Either way, I feel like if we are to move on to the next level, he can't be the goalkeeper. But it is a tough shot. Can I say I would have saved it myself? Probably not. And it gave Palace that hope, and they definitely came out swinging in the second half, and that was when the momentum of the game definitely changed. I feel like we were getting overrun in the midfield. I feel like they were physically stronger than us in the midfield. They were just winning that battle, and uh, Chelsea didn't really have much of an answer to it. And our third goal was kind of against the run of play. Tammy Abraham scored it, uh, obviously coming off the bench. Two substitutes linking up himself and Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Driving in through the Palace defence. Little flick ball out to Tammy Abraham, who finished it really nicely into the bottom corner to give Chelsea a 3-1 lead. And I did think it was game over at that. But there was a massive lapse in concentration. I think it was 80 seconds later, Crystal Palace 
pulled one back, and it was, as I mentioned, Christian Benteke. Uh, Patrick Van Aanholt just waltzes into the Chelsea box. Not great defending from, firstly, Mount and James, who let him run. Then Christensen sticks a leg out, doesn't do very convincingly, pulls it across, and then Benteke is pretty much unmarked. And even in the poor form he's been in over the last 12 to 18 months, he was not going to miss that. And it made the last few minutes in particular very, very uncomfortable. Now, I do think after we conceded the second goal, uh, Frank Lampard made a very, very important change, bringing uh, Jorginho on for Billy Gilmore. And I have to say, fair play to Jorginho. He's had to wait for his chance to come back into the team after the restart. And he was absolutely excellent when he came on yesterday. It just brought that level of calmness and composure that I feel like we needed. I feel like certainly after he conceded that Benteke goal, we started to panic. And Jorginho came on and he just was brilliant. And I think physically as well, he won a lot of physical battles in the middle of the park. But the most impressive thing about him yesterday was how he got on the ball in tough situations, calmed everyone down, gave it off, got it back, spread it out there, got it back, spread it out there, got it back. Do you know what I mean? He was nearly always available for a pass. And I must say, I think he was one of the main reasons we held on for the three points yesterday. But there was an onslaught of late Palace attacks. And uh, firstly, a Scott Dan header got on the end of a Wilfred Zaha cross, left completely unmarked at the back post, would you believe it? Heads it off the inside of the post any more than a couple of millimetres um, to the other side, and that is going in, and that's all three points gone. Uh, very, very lucky. I think it was in the end cleared by Ruben Loftus cheek after a couple of blocks between himself and Zuma. Uh, just after that from Patrick Van Aanholt and then Kurt Zuma with one of the best tackles of the season that I've seen as I cannot like it was an unbelievable tackle to stop Christian Benteke just when he looked like he was going to go in to finish it in comes Zuma like an absolute steam train to make an, one of the most satisfying looking tackles I think I've seen all season and that is not even me being you know that's not even me exaggerating or anything that is it was an unbelievable tackle. And that was how the game finished. 3-2 to Chelsea. And we were kind of just waiting to see if Arsenal were going to be able to do us a second solid in a row. Obviously, they beat Wolves at the weekend, which was a massive result for us as well. And it looked like they were going to. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang gave him the lead. But the game kind of flipped on his head when Eddie Nketiah was sent off for a late challenge. But so Jamie Vardy equalised late on. But Leicester stay fourth. Chelsea stay third. And now going into Manchester United's game against Villa tomorrow night. They're under a little bit of pressure, but... Certainly, in the form that Manchester United have been in, I can't see them getting anything other than the three points at Phillip Park. But it's lucky that we were ma we were able to get our match over and done with before the rest of them played. It's nice to have that little bit of momentum or that little shift of pressure. And I think Leicester probably felt it last night going into their game. And I think Leicester have definitely felt that level of pressure since the restart began because they've just not been the same side that they were, uh, you know, pre-lockdown. And... I don't know what it is. I think, I think we definitely seen that a little bit with Sheffield United a bit as well. That kind of uh, momentum is lost. I think when you're a really big team and you have really big players, I feel like Leicester have a have a few of them players, but on the whole, I think they're definitely a team that um, have gotten to where they are this season because of the momentum. And I think Sheffield United were, you know, that is definitely the case for them a lot more. So now we're seeing a case where the likes of Chelsea. And Manchester United, who have those high quality players on, you know, high budgets and you know uh, high wage high wage bills, uh, are doing the business at the minute. And touch wood, it stays the same uh, as it's going at the minute. But um, we've got four very important games left between now and the end of the season. We've got uh, Sheffield United away next, which is an absolutely massive game. Then we've got Norwich at home, which. Maybe Norwich might even be relegated by then. I don't even know what their story is at the minute. Then we've got the champions, Liverpool at Anfield. And then finishing off with what could be a potentially huge game in the race for the top four as Chelsea face Wolves at Stamford Bridge. It's going to be a very, very exciting end to the season, I'm sure. And not good for my heart based off that game against Palace yesterday. But yeah, boys and girls, let me know your thoughts on the game yesterday and let me know your thoughts on any other of the Premier League games. How do you think... Who do you think is going to finish in the top four? Because it's it's quite hard to tell at the minute. You know, Leicester and Chelsea are in the ascendancy at the minute, but you got Manchester United there who um, have looked really, really dangerous since the restart. And obviously Wolves and Sheffield United as well, very much still in the mix as well. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Subscribe if you are new, and I will catch you later.